Good day and welcome to Smart PDT. Uh, today we're going to look at the real PDT platform and how it operates and how it works. So let's go have a look at it. So first of all you need to put in your account, you need to put in your password and then you also need to put in your verification code. Once you've logged on to your platform, now you'll be able to do changes to your radio's names, create groups, create patrol points, create uh, uh, GPS location coordinates and all the rest of it. So let's go have a look at it. So if we go user management, this is basically to control the actual devices. So when we talk about user, we actually mean device management. So to create a user is basically to create an account for the radio to be operating, to basically operate. So, for example, you'll see on the top here where it says use order. This is basically when you need to create an account for a device for it to log onto your platform, you need to contact us and say you need 5 or 10 or 15 user accounts, and then you're able to go and create the account. So, now to create the account, you can basically call it whatever you would like to. So, we're going to call it Blue Breed 1. Your password, you can put in your desired password for the device to be able to log on to the platform. And then you can give the radio a name. So we're going to call it David. So now this device is called David. So now if we carry on, we're able to go and add the group. So if we want to say it needs to go into Blue Breed Group, which is basically what we call your channels. So now channels are now be called what we call groups. So we're going to add the blue group, blue blue breed group. We're going to add demo group, and we're going to also add the guards group. Now, say if you don't want this device to be able to talk to the guards, you can easily go and remove it later. Basically, doing what we did. The default group is basically every time the radio switches on, it will tell you which default group it basically must go to. So we have to set, uh, set the desired group to go to blue breed. So every time the radio switches on, it will go to Blue Breed. The phone number is where you store the cell phone number that is inserted into the device. So you've got record of the cell phone number. Right. The functions of the device, you can basically switch off or switch on like you want. If you don't want the device to receive an SOS, you can unclick it. You can click it to back on for it to receive. You don't want it to be have stun protection. Stun is basically if the radio gets stolen, you can basically stun the device and nobody is able to utilize the device. So that's basically all the different functions you can switch on and off on the radio. View location, if you don't want the device to be able to view other radio locations and you switch it off. If you want to view where the device location is, you can switch it on to view where the location of the device as well as GPS positioning. Call logs is basically your call audio recording on the system. So if you want call recordings on the device or not, you can switch it on and off as well as the platform audio which is your dispatch software okay to display the group members if you don't want the radio to see who's in the group or out of the group you can switch off that function last group is basically when the radio switches on and off it will go to the desired last group that it was in change group is basically allowing the radio to change between the two groups so if you only want them to be in blue breed and you you'll only be able to stay in blue breed you will only be able to change the demo so that's basically what change the group does management management group is basically for a platform we always just keep it ticked on because ugh, there's no really need for it to be off or on we haven't found anything that it does really to the system and, and does any changes as well as your pc console all call is basically that it can communicate to all the radios at once with the press of the button. So that means that you can do private calling and all of that as well, which is on the top there. So you've got the private calling and you've got all call function, which means you can basically communicate to all the radios in, within the group. Monitor is basically only for the dispatch software, but we keep it on for the radio. Monitor basically says that you can monitor this 
group and you can monitor this group. So in other words, if somebody talks in Blue Breed, you can monitor it and you can hear it on the device. And if somebody talks on Demo, you can monitor it and hear it on the device. So you can put a monitor on both channels, enabling the device to be able to listen to two channels at one time. So that's why we leave the monitor on if you desire to do that. So if you carry on scrolling down, the description on the device is you can say this is at customer Westgate, for example, or wherever the customer's location. So you've got a record where this device is. The console display, you can also have the description. You can say Westgate, keep it short, and as the wording is very important, you don't want too many long words appearing on your display software. So name it off to the side. Now, how the IME works in the IME2, you can actually lock the device that if there is another SIM card that's inserted in that device and tries to log onto the, pla onto the platform account, it will actually not log in. So it has to see the recognized IME number. So you can actually lock the device to the IME. Now on your S100s, your S200s, your S300s, your S400s, it's got an Android app menu password. So if you don't want the, the person to be able to go and change the settings within the actual real PDT application, you can block them by enabling a password that only the supervisors or the management are able to do so. And that's basically it. The encryption is basically for more security on the radios. But because it's using an account and a password, it's pretty secure. The reason being is somewhat figures out what your account and your password is. You can always just change it later to something else. So that's basically how to create a user. Let's go and create this user now. Oops, it's already created. So it tells you that this account already exists. Let's choose a number. Hopefully it doesn't exist. There we go. So we go Blueberry 10. We go create a, the account. And now the radio device account is created. So now to view that the account that we just created, you can basically go to user details. But before we do that, one thing I missed is you can actually select what type of icon you want the radio to be in. So we've chosen general user. If you want the radio to have an interphone icon, which is a radio device icon, you can actually change it Yeah. But remember what user type you utilize. The reason being is because now if you want to go look at what your user is, you need to select the exact icon. Because if you choose interphone and you view, you're not going to see any devices. So we've chosen general user. So if now we go view to check the general user, you'll be able to see all the devices that the customer's got. So these are your basically your accounts, and as you can see, there's a new one that we created. It's got a zero order and no order ID because there's no accounts available on this platform to be able to activate it. We've got three different type of accounts. We have video. We've got no, uh, sorry, we've got your normal account. We've got your uh, patrol account, and then we've got your video streaming account. So it's depending on what the customer really wants to go for at the end of the day. So now let's go have a look at the accounts that we created. As you can see, here's the name of the radio, Radio 1. All the different functions that we've enabled and disabled for that the customer wanted. And all the groups that the customer would like. As well as the Android app menu password to make sure that nobody is able to go and change any settings on the device. So let's go now and have a look how to create groups. First of all, we're just going to go and delete this because now the customer is going to see this radio on the network and we don't want him to do that. So let's go delete it. There we go. Now, to create groups, you go to group management, you create group, and this is basically where you go and create your groups called guards or if you want to call it reaction or basically what you would like to call it. You can name it over here and it will basically appear on the groups. So that's basically how to create the, the groups and the radios and how to management, manage the accounts that's already in place. So you can also go and change what the radio is named by clicking on the account and everything like that, where you're able to do the changes and everything like that. So let's quickly just go through the user list. So bulk create, you're not going to use. Modify user, you can do it yeah, by user details. User function in group, you can also basically do the changes over here. 
already so you don't have to change anything there default PC console account that's basically your dispatch software which account you're going to use for your default um, dispatch software group you can create a group bulk create group group list modify group member relevance group now it's actually one of my favorite things to play around with so as you can see here's your uh, groups that you can do now you can create a group called all channels or all groups and then what happens is with this group if, that we call all groups can actually have all the groups in it so you can monitor and talk to all the groups within one channel so that's basically what relevance group does so if we go to demo now we can actually say in the demo channel when we press the PDT in guards I'm sorry because it's guards were selected when we click guards guards the, the guy people the, the radios in guards will be able to hear us the guys in blue breed will, will be able to hear us and the guys in demo will be able to hear us all at the same time so when you press the pdt they'll be able to hear you and then you'll be able to hear all three channels at the same time but we're not going to use that function because it's not really needed as yet so that's basically what we call a little scan group scans the groups so you can hear what's being said on all the groups on one group basically so that's basically what re relevance group modify relevance group basically does the same thing as relevance group does group message yeah you can basically set the the messages that you want to do and it saves it onto the dispatch software like your save messages on the radios and all that you can basically add it yeah and then that's basically it. Then your order center is basically the accounts that you want to order from us or anything like that. But it's better to contact us by email rather and order the accounts like that because it's faster. Uh, create a department if you want to create a department to manage the platform. Certain parts of the platform are allowed to do changes and all that. You can do that as well here with the department. Patrol management is basically our first patrol system where it came out of the radios and how this basically worked is you were able to have GPS patrolling and then you were able to do NFC tags patrolling now what's better how this works is this basically works better with your GPS positioning so you can actually mark points where on the on, on the map and when the radio reaches that point close to the map, you can actually clock in using the GPS patrol feature. So if you go and you mark this place on the map, and as soon as the radio gets close to the mark, he's able to clock in on his device or on his radio that has a GPS uh, patrol feature on it. There we go. So that's basically your GPS patrol feature, your patrol 2.0 is exactly is the same as your patrol 1.0 which is your just your patrol uh, this works is with the NFC tags strictly with the NFC tags it works a lot more better the reason being is because it's a, a new updated version and it's easier to work with and to create the plans and the site groups and everything like that which is in our other videos that we're going to be sharing with you a bit later so we basically got the gif of it multimedia management so every time you send a video or view a video or take a picture or send a video it gets all stored on the cloud for one month so you're able to pull up all that information depending on which day you want to and it will pull up all the recordings for that day or time basically when the radio is on but as you can see the radios hasn't been on so there's no really vid any videos to view for that time or period um, audio list is to view your audio, your audio recordings on the channel. So if you want to pick up the day for the whole day's recordings, you can basically see it, delete it as much as you want. So you can view it, delete it, download the video recordings. As you can see, there's nothing being used as this is a new account and the customer is still getting, uh, uh, learning how to utilize it. And that's basically it. So if you go to map, you can also do an alarm fence can draw up alarm fence for the radios you can do everything basically online you can intercom do an intercom fence so if all the radios come within a little square block you can do your fencing basically it, I suggest using the display software is much more easier than doing it on the platform because when your controller gets up 
and wakes up and switches on the PC, sees all these new fences and the, 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 the PC screaming at them, it becomes a bit of a problem. So rather utilize it on the dispatch software and let the controller see what you're doing. Right, the indoor map is basically a new feature that's coming out where we're going to be putting in GPS trackers within the buildings. So because the GPS is only traceable outside the building because of the satellites in space, we are able now to do indoor map GPS tracking with a new system that's coming out. This is, should be coming out in the next month or two, and this is basically what this feature does over here. So if we go to GPS setting time, now this is basically the interval that the device communicates with the platform and the dispatch software. So every time the radio device pings its point location on the map, it actually ping points it on the map and then it does it every five seconds. So you get five second intervals where you know where the radio is and where it's traveled. That's basically how it works. We suggest keeping it around five seconds to get the utmost uh, work out of the actual platform. And that's basically it. That's how to work the online management platform. Your host is Dave and it's been a pleasure showing you how everything works. Have a great day.